COVID cases are increasing. Deaths have surpassed the 1,000 mark in the country. People who have experienced or have contracted the virus would not want to go through, especially those who have recovered it, go through the same process. Voices are being heard, but are they listened to? That's the question. The first family were also not spared from the virus as they contract the first lady president and the president contracted the virus on the 26th of May and were in isolation and just recently got out. First lady gets candid about the road to recovery. Madam Gengos, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, Blanche. Well, when you were given the results by your doctor that you and your husband tested positive for COVID-19. What went through your mind at that moment? So we got our results very late in the morning. You'll notice that State House released the press release about our positive status around three or four o'clock in the morning. That was exactly two hours after we got them. So we got it about half past one. And President's first reaction is that we must be transparent. I think he's very clear about being transparent at all times. So he immediately called Hengari at 1.30 one, in the morning and said, Hengari, this is what happened. You need to release. Uh, poor Hengari was still shocked, uh, but the president was very calm the whole time. Um, and I don't know what he was thinking, but I certainly know what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, president is high risk, and I had lots of thoughts going through my mind at that point. And like everybody else, when they first told they covered and when they know they have underlying conditions, the first thing that sets in is anxiety. Because COVID is like Russian roulette. You don't know who it's going to take and who it's going to spare. So I, 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 I will admit to feeling very anxious, both about myself and about my husband. Mm -hmm. And during the conversations, so what was his reaction like, what should Dr. Engari say in the press statement to the Namibian nation? So at that time, we were still feeling very strong. We were effectively asymptomatic at that point. President does tend to have a little bit of a cough, um, especially during winter. So we thought nothing of it, nor was it very far gone. The reasons we also tested isn't because we had symptoms, but I, I remember feeling very fatigued, but I wasn't surprised because I had worked out that morning, I had a very busy weekend, so it was a normal feeling for me of being fatigued. But his doctor was there, and we did mention, look, we both feel a little bit fatigued, we feel a bit funny, we don't know what it is. So the doctor said, let's not take chances, let's just test for the sake of being thorough. So we were shocked that we got covered. But Blanche, the strangest feeling, you have a feeling of almost disappointment in yourself, and almost wondering, what did I do wrong? And I raised this point because I certainly felt some form of disappointment in myself because the first thing I thought is, did I bring this and give it to my husband who's high risk? And I raised this because I'm, I'm seeing a very dangerous trend of families blaming each other. other yes. You are the one who brought COVID. Now imagine the burden of somebody living for the rest of their lives thinking, I am the reason my husband died or my wife died or my mm -hmm. child died or my parents died. And this blame game is not only happening at family level, it's happening at societal level and it's happening at political level. And we need to stop the blame game. Just a day within the recovery process, how, what were you doing, you and your husband? Once we recovered? No, during the recovery process. So you wake up in the morning, and so, <laughs> okay, so um, our morning didn't change. Our president was on his phone almost constantly. He was liaising a lot with the Minister of Health and other ministers on unrelated issues. Um, he was in contact with his office the whole time. Um, and, and, and frankly, uh, sorry, Hage, I don't think that was the right thing because he must rest and he didn't rest. He didn't rest for a second. Um, and maybe that was good because being busy kept him focused away from what would happen, what could happen. Um, so we spent a lot of time together. We were in self-isolation together. Um, and we, we basically did some work. I was very fatigued, so I slept a lot. And um, 
so there's, there's, there's certain days. Day four, day five is very important. And then day eight, day nine is critical. Because many people fall very sick on day eight, day mm -hmm. nine from the first time that they got symptoms. So we were waiting for that day eight, day nine, but we knew what our day eight, day nine was because we acted almost immediately. If you take too long, if you've had symptoms for a long time, by the time you test and you have your results, you're probably already at day eight and nine, day nine. I know there's a lot of questions around why President and I didn't vaccinate. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow at six o'clock, I will be on Facebook Live. I know that you'll be with me as well. Mm -hmm for the benefit of your viewers, but we will be there with our doctor to answer those questions. I think it's an important question. I think it's a fair question. I think we must all be accountable. We must be transparent. So we'll be answering that question tomorrow.